out. Yeah, get out. Four. Did you just say Ann Kirk? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council meeting. It is June the 29th. Councilman Shacklett has our prayer. I think you're going to introduce a guest, and then you have our Pledge of Allegiance. I am. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, this evening I wanted to invited a special friend, uh, a friend of our community. Uh, so many exciting and wonderful things that he and his fellowship and com community is doing. This is, uh, Corey, would you come to the podium? Corey Tremble, the pastor of uh, Experience Community Church here in our town. And I just wanted to uh, do a couple of things. A tip of the hat to what they have provided for our community. If you haven't had an opportunity to go to our airport, we actually have a, a new statue or this is a uh, ad, out at the airport, and it's uh, added. It's a great opportunity for art to be presented in our community, and what that does for our community, what it says about our community at that gateway, was just a wonderful uh, a piece of art. And Joe Brown is a member of the fellowship of your community, right? Is, is, uh, and yes, sir. He's in our um, Cannon County Campus Church. Yes, sir. Right, and. But the Experience Church actually made the donation to, the, to that, so and made that happen. And I thought it was a wonderful example of how the community works together to create something that has an enduring value to our community. So I wanted to, one, thank you for that opportunity and, if, and encourage our public to get out there and have take a look at it because it's a beautiful piece of artwork. And it's called Direction, I think, is, yes, is the title of it. So it, it, uh, it'll be, if you get to our airport, not only is our airport a beautiful place to be, but it's got a beautiful sculpture there to, to look at as well. And I want to ask Corey to do our opening prayer. Uh, I got encouraged a couple of weeks ago. Uh, someone had heard uh, the sermon on Father's Day, and they said, you need to listen to that. And I actually listened to it about three times because I, I really uh, was uh, encouraged by the message that you gave on Father's Day. So I wanted to ask you to do our opening prayer here. If, if I can be honest, when a city council person calls you, you get a little nervous because you're worried <laughs> that you said something wrong in a sermon. So, and then I also assume the mayor is going to take me up in a plane since we donated that uh, uh, that piece of art to the to the I airport, have so I've got the parachute ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the response I, I wanted there. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what you were looking for. <laughs> um, yeah, Mr. Shacklett, thank you. Uh, I am I've been living in the city since 1998, um, and I'll be very honest with you. My wife and I moved here for for MTSU, and we never thought we'd stay here. We're not from here. I'm from St. Louis. My wife is from. Uh, the Boston, New York area. Her family's kind of divided between the two. Never thought we'd stay here. And since 1998, uh, those of you who, who were around during that time, this isn't the same city. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's an exciting city. And I was <laughs> telling someone recently that when I moved here, I think Murfreesboro was about 60,000 people, and that included the university. You know, So um, I think we're coming up getting pretty close to about 200,000 in this area, if I'm not mistaken. And we have become a legitimate, a legitimate city, and um, and I don't mean that in any kind of condescending way. It's just kind of weird to see that evolution, and I'm honored to be here. And I know several of you up here, and um, we're very blessed with good leadership in this town. And 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 quickly before I pray for you guys and, and pray for all of us in this room, I was asked to speak at our state capitol by by Shane Reeves recently, who's a, also a great man, and. Um, when I was there at the state capitol, I, I, I wanted to encourage, but, but also challenge a little bit in the fact that as a minister, I, I teach our congregation, we have a large congregation, that, that we as citizens are to respect you. Uh, God tells us that, Romans chapter 13, I'm to respect the governing authority. That is, that is a biblical Christian value is to respect the government. Um, in the same chapter, it also says that the government is in place because God has allowed it to be in place. And so I am a citizen uh, and a Christian citizen. I am to respect and revere you men and women. Um, you as the leaders in my community also have a challenge, not because you won more votes than your opponent, uh, but because the creator of the universe allowed you to be sitting in the chair that you're sitting in right now. Amen. And, and I don't mean that in any kind of scare tactic or anything like that, but, but that, that is a reminder for any of us in leadership that we have been placed in a position uh, for something greater than, 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 than politics or uh, rhetoric. We have been placed in a position of authority to lead people. And that is, that's a big deal. 
And so we should be praying for you. We should respect you. And, um, and we trust you to lead our city into its next, next evolution. Um, so all that being said, I believe in all of you and, and you may not care, but <laughs> I personally, um, I personally believe in the leadership of our city and I'm proud. I'm proud to be a citizen of, of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So, um, with that being said, if, if, if I can pray for you, Mr. Shacklett, I'll, I'll pray. Father God, we love you. Lord, thank you for everyone in this room. We, we do thank you for a wonderful city. It's, Lord, it's, it's got its issues because it's growing. It's growing rapidly. People are moving here from all over the country, God, to be in this area, and that is because we live in a good town. Father, from, from our mayor all the way to all of our councilmen and women to, to our first responders, to our police, our fire department, um, God, we pray that, that you give these men and women wisdom. We pray that you protect them emotionally and physically and spiritually, God. We pray for our city that we will evolve in a way that, that honors you, God, and, uh, and blesses the citizens of it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for where we are. We thank you for Middle Tennessee. We thank you for Murfreesboro. And we pray that you just keep your hand on, on all of the conversation that takes pl pl place in this room tonight, that uh, you will give everyone level, level heads and give everyone wisdom in this room as they discuss whatever topics they have to cover. And um, Father, I thank you personally that I get the opportunity to get to know some of these men and women. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Corey Trimble, you're a good man. Thank you. <laughs> Shane's good. It's Shane. <laughs> good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Like the mayor, like the gentleman just said, the, the minister, it is a, a exciting city to, to be part of. It. I've been here now a little bit over three and a half years working for, for the city. Great leadership, I, you know, I, I enjoy it as well, so, so thank you. I'm here tonight to rec represent, or to recognize, that is, the STARS Award members for uh, the month of May. As you know, the purpose of the STARS Award is to recognize those employees who go above and beyond the normal call of duty in providing an excellent level of customer service to both our internal and our external uh, customers. Sometimes that simply means helping another department that may need assistance in critical situations. Well, tonight's recipients are three individuals who immediately joined in the search for a person who was having a, a medical emergency issue and needed to be rescued at Barfield Park. All three uh, recipients work in the Parks and Recreation Department, and they are Mr. Bennett Barrett. Now, Bennett, he's, he's on his second tour with us. He worked for us initially in 2011, came back in 2020, He's been here now about three years. The other gentleman is Mr. Carmen Wells. He's a groundskeeper and also a maintenance worker. He's been with us now 10 years. And then last but not least is Mr. Todd Fisher. He's a groundskeeper and maintenance <coughs> worker. He's been with us for a total of 16 years. So all these gentlemen have a long-term tenure with the city. They were recommended for the STARS Award uh, by fire engineer Benjamin Honeycutt. Here's a quick summary of the, of the letter that was sent to us by Engineer Honeycutt. On April 6th, the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department, Rutherford County Emergency Medical Service, and the, Med the Murfreesboro Police Department responded to a medical emergency call at Barfield Park. Serving as the acting captain that day, I noted that the MDT description indicated that there, were, there was an individual on the red trail in need of rescue. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation employees were very beneficial in accommodating to assist emergency personnel with finding the exact location of the patient. Also, they went above and beyond the call of duty to assist in operating Murfreesboro Parks, I'm sorry, they went above and call of duty in assisting us in ensuring that the success of the objective. I'm recommending the following individuals, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Walls, and Mr. Fisher for the STARS Award for the month of May. I believe that they represent the city of Murfreesboro with honor for their service. They show compassion, integrity, and willingness to help other departments in a time of need. Sincerely, Engineer 
uh, Honeycutt. Well, Mayor and City Council members, these three drummers are what I call team players. They were very familiar with the grounds at Barfield Park. They knew exactly what equipment they needed in order to move the people around quickly. I think you would agree they belong on the Targe team, on the Stars team. With that said, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Mr. Walls, and Mr. Fisher, if you would please stand. On behalf of the mayor, the council members, and the entire city of Murfreesboro, thank you. It's also a special night because we get to recognize someone who has worked in our city on the Water and Sewer Board for almost 25 years now. Um, it's my honor tonight to be able to recognize Dr. Alphonse Carter. He served on the, on the Water and Sewer Board since 1999. He's currently serving his sixth four-year term. In the 24 years of, be of, of being on the board, he's been an instrumental part where he served as the board vice chair since 2017. He oversaw the creation of multiple special sanitary sewer assessment districts, incentivizing development for the city. Under his leadership, the establishment of a stormwater utility program was created, and under his guidance, he facilit facilitated a partnership with Middle Tennessee State University that allowed for public education and outreach efforts that initiated annual stream cleanups. Whereas he helped develop financial policies that took the department from a deficit to a surplus in capital reserves, affording the department tens of millions of dollars in deferred debt. Dr. Carter adopted policies, procedures, and general design guidelines that set clear expectations for the development community and other stakeholders in meeting progressive standards in a dynamic community. Whereas his tenure on the board oversaw the construction of hundreds of millions of dollars of infrastructure, including the upgrade of the Stones River water plant and the water resources recovery facility, regional pumping stations, and multiple trunk line sewer interceptors, sewer interceptors and elevated water tanks. It's not in here, but my guess is that you have seen hundreds of thousands of PowerPoint presentations over your, um, <laughs> your, your, your term on the board. <coughs> I should have put that in the proclamation. Whereas our city is fortunate to have such a devoted and dedicated person as Dr. Alphonse Carter to have served in the best interest of the customers of the Murfreesboro Water Resources Department and the citizens of Murfreesboro. Now, therefore, I, Shane McFarland, Mayor of the City of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby proclaim this day as Dr. Alphonse Carter Day in the city of Murfreesboro and ask all citizens to join me in this well-deserved recognition. Dr. Carter. All right, we'll move to the consent agenda. You have nine items on your consent agenda. Is there anything that needs to be removed for discussion from the agenda? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Aye. 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 Dr. Carter, Ms. Carter, I know y'all would love to stay and watch our entire meeting, but we want to tell you we're not going to be offended if you guys decide that y'all want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're free to leave any time. We don't want y'all to, to think that you have to wait on us. 
although I know this is riveting um, discussion that we'll have tonight. You All right. Wait on another Darren Gore PowerPoint. That's right. Probably, so. <laughs> All right. Um, we have no minutes. We have old business. We have Ordinance 23023, termination of the Osborne Lane Special, Ten Special Sanitary Sewer Assessment District. This is second reading. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. We'll move to land use matters. We have sewer allocation variants for Old Fort Parkway. This is a hotel. Mr. Barbie? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. Uh, this afternoon, I have four sewer allocation variances before you. The first one is for a proposed hotel on Old Fort Parkway. Um, this is an extended stay hotel uh, under the name of Studio 6. Um, staff has reviewed the application um, and they are requesting 77 additional single family units in order to um, provide adequate sewer capacity for this, this hotel. Our water resources department has reviewed the data that was submitted and has found that the existing system does have capacity to handle the additional, additional flow from the hotel. Um, staff has also reviewed the application and has de decided that the additional <coughs> job creation and tax revenue along with the dedication of right-of-way for the Malloy Lane extension and the <coughs> road construction that will be a part of this development have, are more of a value than the additional single-family units. Um, I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions for Mr. Barbie? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skills Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. We have another sewer allocation variance. This is Manchester Pike. Yes, sir. This is for a proposed fuel station and convenience store located at 2135 Manchester Pike. Our Water Resources Department has reviewed the application. Um, and determined that the additional 1.5 single family units of capacity that they're requesting can be managed by the existing, by the existing sanitary sewer system in this area. Uh, staff use the advantages of job creation and tax revenue of greater value than the single family units that they are requesting. Um, I'm available if you have any questions. I, I just have a quick question and yes, it's more of a a planning question is this next to an existing gas station t as well it is adjacent to i believe it is a kangaroo okay uh, fuel station that is adjacent to the west i believe has this already passed planning we have not they've had a uh I believe it's a pre-application meeting it's where that car wash is on manchester highway they've, they've had a pre-application meeting and they're okay. waiting to submit pending outcome of tonight's tonight's item Okay, I'm just interested where typically we would have a gas station next to a gas station. That seems uncommon. Uh, I, I would say it is uncommon. Um, and this is a property that we have had some issues with over the last several years. It's an old car wash that um, there, I think there have been some improvements on site that were not authorized. Um, there have been other proposed uses that I think are probably um, where a uh, gas station would probably be more desirable than the other uses that have been proposed for the site. And so okay. uh, for those reasons, uh, staff is supportive of it. Okay. All right, we have a motion. motion. I'll make a motion to approve it. I mean, it still has to go before planning. So I get to see it a few more times. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Kells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? No. Uh, we have a sewer allocation va variance for New Salem Highway. This is commercial development. Yes, sir. The next uh, variance request for you is for 4.4 single family units of center capacity for a commercial strip center and convenience store gas station located at the intersection of highway or New Salem Highway and Rivermont Way. Um, our water resources department has evaluated the information submitted and has determined that the additional sewer 
capacity can be handled by the existing um, sanitary sewer system. Murfreesboro Planning has also reviewed the application and has valued that the uh, creation of jobs and additional tax revenue uh, have a greater value than the additional 4.4 single family units that are requested. Available if you have any questions. Question so moved. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right. We move to item 14. Uh, this is the e East Main Street Dapper Owl. Yes, sir. The final sewer allocation variance tonight <laughs> is for approximately 1.5 single family units of sewer capacity uh, for the Dapper Owl. Um, coffee bar and restaurant. It's located at 2412 East Main Street. Um, our Water Resources Department has evaluated uh, the data that was provided to them and they have determined that the existing system can manage uh, the additional flow from the, that location. Uh, staff has also reviewed the application as well and feels that the additional creation of jobs and sales tax revenue um, outweighs the value of the additional 1.5 single family units that they're requesting. I'm abstaining from discussion and voting on this. Any questions? If there are no questions, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shocklet? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Abstain. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Barbie. All right, we'll move to on motion. We have the Murfreesboro City School pre K parking lot maintenance. Mr. Shelley. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. I'm here on behalf of the city staff to seek approval for the reallocation of CIP funds for the Murfreesboro City School pre K program at 930 Cason Lane. The estimated funds of $160,000 are needed for maintenance and additions to the existing parking lot. In March, Council approved a budget for the purchase and renovations of this building. The building is being refurbished today to service a city school pre-K facility to begin in August. The pre-K will serve low to moderate income families. The renovations will allow approximately eight city school classrooms to be used for other grades. Parking lot improvements are part of the overall building renovations to prepare the facility for its intended use this fall. Staff proposes to use on-call contractors to perform the work. Uh, council priorities served are responsible budgeting, uh, modifying an existing facility, reduces impact on city and schools budgets. The expense of $160,000 will be funded from fiscal year 2019 CIP. I thank you for your time tonight and can answer any questions at this time. If no questions, I move for approval. Second. Motion second, please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank, thank you, Michelle. All right, we have um, item 16, the purchase of two new trucks. Uh, Chief McCluskey. And Chief, I think this is the first time that you've been in front of us that you've not been the interim chief. So we want to say congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. And good evening. And um, the staff comes and recommendations and ask for approvals for two new Chevrolet pickup trucks, 2022 <coughs> three models. Uh, through the state Tennessee vehicle contract with Wilson County Motors. These vehicles will be used for our frontline vehicles and replacing vehicles that will be passed down to other members in our department. The expenditure is uh, $71,629 and funded through the 2019, 21, and 22 CIP. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. What color are they going to be? <laughs> White. That's <laughs> <laughs> all we can get. All right. We'll move to item 17, work authorization uh, number 5, Old Fort Ballpark, parking lot and renovations. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, Council. Uh, before you tonight is an agreement with ELI. 
uh, for design services for the old Fort Park ball field, uh, parking lot, and then stormwater improvements totaling $116,410. Uh, this pro project will provide a much needed uh, improvement and facelift uh, to the area that was originally developed in the late 1970s and serves as a corridor for the Adams Tennis Complex and the golf course. Uh, funds for design are allocated in the CIP and a mix of CIP and ARPA funds are allocated uh, for the actual project. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. I'm assuming the lighting is going to be improved or you're going to LED lighting? Or yes, sir. Our plan is to go to LED lighting. That's kind of standard for every project that we do now. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skelts Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you, Nate. All right, we'll move to item 18 the contract to purchase replacement transit buses. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, Transportation Department is requesting your approval to purchase nine replacement buses for the city's transit system. Uh, the Federal Transit Administration allows the replacement of federally funded buses after seven years of 250,000 miles. Our current fleet has 10 years and 300,000 plus miles on every bus. Um, in February 2021, Council approved the purchase of replacement buses, but due to manufacturing shutdowns, uh, Ford Motor Corporation canceled our order. Um, it wasn't just a problem for Murfreesboro, it was a problem all across the country and uh, it's left agencies and, and cities scrambling to compete for what's left out there and what's coming off the line now. Um, in early May, we released a request for competitive seal proposals to uh, purchase nine buses and we received two responsible uh, responses. Um, after review of the proposals by transportation and the fleet departments, we determined that uh, or concluded that Mid-South Bus, which is located here in Murfreesboro, was our best option. Um, the price per bus is a little over 141000 each, um, with the total uh, for the nine buses being $1,270,737. Uh, this will be paid for using a combination of federal and state funds, and uh, these are allocated in the transportation budget. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Wow, you said that the buses are over 300,000 miles, huh? Yeah, our, I, I, that's a, I'd give a hand to our fleet department because uh, even the bus vendors have all said, we can't believe you've been able to keep those on the road this long. So yeah. they've done a good job. That's great. No other comments, I move for approval. Second. Motion second, please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Skells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. All right, we'll move to fiscal year 24. Uh, this is a personnel budget amendment. Mayor, City Council, thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight. Uh, Water Resources is requesting a promotion of our uh, Fats, Oils, and Grease Coordinator to Development Coordinator and adding a new position for Project Engineer. Uh, we had thought we could um, push this off for an FY25 uh, budget year. However, based on uh, kind of some level of service uh, lack of level of service that we've been providing lately on plans review, we felt that it was uh, critical to fill this position as soon as possible. So uh, we have uh, in your physical impact, I'm saying 105,000 is av available by, diminish by decreasing a sinking fund that we have in the current FY24 budget. So the funds are available. I did not put in the benefits. So there should be about another 48,000 dollars on top of that so you're That's, saying you made a mistake i made a mistake yes okay. sir all right uh, i'm sorry about that although i will say by the time we end up hiring if we can even find a project engineer we'll probably be closer to that hundred and five thousand number uh project engineers are with their professional licensure uh, are, are tough to find but uh in the interim we would be using some uh some local consultants to help us um kind of get over this this plans review hurdle that, or challenge that we have right now. But we would we would like to start recruiting for that professional in, or project engineer as soon as possible. I, I just want to make a comment on this that, you know, the water and sewer department, resources department being proactive. I know um, 
Mr. Gore had looked at how many plans that we have in process and that's not slowing down and being proactive really jumped on that to be able to make sure that there was help to be able to get those out. So thank you for being able to do that. Thank you for making, bring it to my if, attention. If we decide to fund it, Darren. <laughs> that's uh, right, gotcha. So moved. Second. Lucky you, motion and second. <laughs> Ms. Saverwater? Aye. Ms. Kels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Darren, all joking aside, Valerie and your team do a great job. Thank you. Everybody's <laughs> working really hard. Just, just a lot of work. Thank you. All right. We have um, board and commission appointments. You have the board of zoning appeals, and this is a reappointment. Um, and, and these are for staggered, for the staggered terms on this. So you have the reappointment of Mr. Tim Tips and Mr. Davis Young. So move. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Saverwater? Aye. Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Chocolate? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. And uh, reappointments to the Historic Zoning Commission Gilbert Backlund, Deborah Belcher, Bill Jakes, and Mary Mae White. So move. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Kels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shocklet? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Then you have Planning Commission. I'm sorry? I think I think that there was an amended uh, oh. memo put out this afternoon or this I'm sorry. Week. Yes. Uh, I, I, I apologize. There's a you hearing have a, aids weren't turned up loud enough. I couldn't hear Matthew telling me and what I, I needed to tell you. So. I had it right here in front of me. Um, so let's we need to amend that. On that what we just voted on uh, actually the reappointments are mr. Jeff Davis and miss Linda Anderson those are the only two that need to be re reappointed so if you'll amend the motion to just those two they expire June 30th 2028 amended motion motion a second on the amended uh, approval Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. You have two or you have two appoint you have a reappointment and appointment to the Planning Commission. Ms. Brian Mr. Brian Prince is to, um, a term that expires June 30th, 2026. Mr. Prince took Ms. Averwater's uh, position and then Mr. Reginald Harris uh, expiring June 30th, 2026. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. You have a couple of beer permits. Ms. Brown? We have two regular permits for a new location for a grocery market at 5109 Franklin Road and an ownership and name change for a restaurant at 2805 Old Fort Parkway Suite O and a special event permit for Black Culture Connected event on July 8th. Applicants have met requirements for a permit and are recommended for approval pending finding final building and codes inspections for the regular permits and a special event permit for the special event beer permit. Any questions? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Any statements to be paid? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Williams, I wanted to put you on the spot, and if you'll give us some information about Celebration Under the Stars, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Celebration Under the Stars is July 4th, which is Tuesday. We're excited uh, to partner again with the Fountains. We're very fortunate. Uh, our event is sponsored completely by Middle Tennessee Electric, so we say it's powered by Middle Tennessee Electric. We've got a great partnership with them. Uh, music and everything will start at four. We'll have DJ and stuff like that. There'll be food vendors. Uh, we have a concert with Kanan Smith that starts at 7.30 and then a 25 minute fireworks show that starts at nine. So the location of the fireworks have changed. It's at the Gateway Island this year. So directly opposite of where they've shot off uh, from previous years. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, that does remind me, Craig and I received an email yesterday um, and Mr. Chris Jones of Middle Tennessee Electric was just updating um, really what's happening with the the heat streak that's coming through until July, what's expected till July the 7th. They've suspended disconnections, but they're also urging uh, residents to try to conserve as much energy as possible through these this this next week. All right. Any other business from staff? 
Uh, looks like we, because of the holiday next week, we will probably probably meet on the 13th, Thursday the 13th in workshop. Um, that's the anticipation right now. If that changes, we'll let council know. So that's workshop. That's workshop. not <coughs> first Here. meeting in the month with public comments. That'll just be a workshop. Yeah, yeah. It'll just be a workshop. At the airport. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other business from council members? Right. Yes, sir. Let me just speak to something that happened a couple last couple of weeks. I've had the opportunity, and, and I know we all go out in the community and talk to folks uh, on a regular basis. But I had a couple of meetings that where I was invited to come speak with uh, folks in the community from different points of view. And um, uh, you know, for all the time that I've been doing this, it was um, it, it was really helpful to. Uh, I hope it was helpful for them. I know it was helpful for me to go out in the community talking to the public in a, when we turn down the heat just a little bit and we actually have a conversation with each other and we're able to hear not only what, on, what is on our minds but what is in our hearts. So I, I just wanted to encourage the public to uh, invite council. Uh, and I encourage the council to uh, look for those opportunities to maybe uh, meet with groups that may not necessarily see us things exactly like we do. Uh, it can be helpful for us to learn how to respectfully dialogue over difficult issues. And I don't doubt that there are difficult issues that are out there that we will face in the, in the uh, future. And it would be uh, really important for us as a community to learn how to dialogue over that those difficult issues so that we can find the, a path forward uh, in our community and, and I want to thank those folks that that uh, invited me to come speak to them uh, uh, and and just encourage y'all to consider uh, making yourself available to these these groups that are in our community uh, to go speak to them uh, one of them was in a home and one of them was in a coffee shop uh, but uh, both of them were, were very helpful for me to kind of see different perspectives on the issues that we face. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill, I've had a lot of discussions over the last two weeks as well. And the one thing I do like would, would say, and I hope council members would appreciate this, I've been tagged on several different fronts on social media and you can't get your information on 140 characters on Twitter. <laughs> and the amount of people who have tagged me or I've had to have dialogue with specifically about the ordinance who have not read the ordinance that are just going off of what they see on social media has been astounding. So what I, I, I've talked to people is to say really whether it be state, local or federal, study the issue and understand what your elected officials are voting on first and then those dialogues i think can can definitely occur because so much is happening now on either side to fit a narrative without actually reading what the information is so have a great july 4th everyone um be safe i know uh seeing chief bowen out there our officers will be out and about i, I want to say this after serving on this council for for almost 20 years please take into account that there are a lot of, of veterans that we have in our community there are a lot of loving pet owners that are in our community and so we have an ordinance that allows fireworks to be shot the third and the fourth is that right Craig right. and so after the third and the fourth I really would say this to Councilman Rick Lance who was sit, who used to sit up here when it's the 6th, there's no reason to shoot fireworks on the 6th. We celebrate the 4th. It's not July 6th. And so the amount of complaints that this council will get over the next week on fireworks and the amount of work that our police officers will do over the next week on fireworks will be unreal. So follow the guidelines. Have a great 3rd and 4th. Shoot off as much and as often as you can, and then let's just stop it. <coughs> What is the time to stop popping? Stop shooting, I mean. 11 o'clock. Well, what, whatever, stop. It, uh, well, I, fire, yeah, I think it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is what? Yeah. I know I, I received several calls last year, late popping, and they would call me and say, what time 
does the law say they have to stop popping? I think it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10. My dog will be um, completely inebriated from the 3rd until about the 7th. So you'll just see a white dog that we're dragging down the sidewalk. So anyway. All right, everyone have a great 4th, and um, we will see you in a couple of weeks.